welcome back to another video you guys we are finally 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 able to do part four y'all don't know what it took for me to get this part four out the devil is like i know he afraid of this being seen but we're going to show it and we're going to expose it and we're going to continue on studying in this because we want to be free we want other people to be free and we want to send this message to the whole world that god can do it we don't have to sit in anything that the enemy is trying to have us sit in and soak in and be bound in. The devil is a liar. And so um, God is able to come in our homes and deliver us. God is able to come in our dreams and set us free. God is, nothing is impossible with the Lord. So let's start off this video with our disclaimer. We're back at part four with bow worship in the music industry and in hollywood also we're exposing the last the last video we did was part three was about the christmas tree this one we gonna hit on a little teeny bit about the christmas tree just in the very very beginning it's basically telling you the scripture where you can find the scripture about what god feels about it how it makes him feel for us to set up those trees in our houses it all she's going to go into talking about how um having a christmas tree in your home uh, basically, like I said, they did all types of orgies. They did all types of sacrifices under those trees, sex rituals, um, even sacrificing babies and all kinds of stuff um, come from bow worship all together. You know, um, this is a lot of the things that the music industry, Hollywood and so forth are doing behind the scenes that we don't see this in the mainstream public. We see it in their videos, some of their music videos, but they're it looks like they're just acting but these are real rituals that have actually taken place let's jump into the video with our disclaimer and we're gonna hop in we're gonna get in where we fit in and we're gonna continue on warning this episode may contain content that is not suitable for children viewer discretion is advised this is bail worship these are all elements which we are going to speak of We have the pentagram there. We have, of course, skulls. We have goats. We've got the sun wheel. Hopefully you've seen the last video we did on the origins and we're gonna start seeing and being able to identify the sun wheel. Okay, y'all gonna hop right on in here. Jump into the video. Let's get it, let's go. Um, I don't wanna waste no time because when I tell you this thing here was a journey Woo, you have no idea. I had so much difficulties. I did this video about six times, just so you know, okay? And it kept deleting. I couldn't save it. It was a lot. So imagine talking about the same thing six times, seven, maybe seven times. I don't even remember. I was over it. That's why I ain't post for a while, because I was just like, I need a break. I'm done. <laughs> I am burnt out, okay? So right here, I'm getting to the part where she's getting ready to tell us where to find those scriptures. And I'm going to put it in the description as well. Um, where we can find the scriptures that, that tells us exactly how God feel about the Christmas tree being in our homes. And because I don't know, we put it in the last video with the Christmas tree, but I wanted to add it. Because like I said, I don't want to ever say anything about a thing and not follow it up with proof. And 18. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house? So she's reading right up here, Ezekiel 8 and 17. That's where she's reading it. She's going to read this one and then that one. So, Judah, that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare neither will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears, mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. So we think this sounds kind of silly. Putting. See, some people think like when we, when people sometimes read scriptures, when they really get into the word of God and you bring the truth to the, the truth comes to the light. For those of us that was in darkness, doing things a certain way, like I said, tradition, family traditions, Stuff that we just made up on our own, stuff that we grew up in. 
when you start coming out of the darkness into the light of, of the Lord, of the Holy Spirit, of Jesus Christ, the, the darkness will be exposed. And if you didn't get a chance to watch my other video, I just posted about a dream I had about Kamala Harris. That is proof, okay? When you when when something is in, when you're dwelling in darkness, you don't notice like things are, you know, the way you're acting, stuff you're doing, uh, rituals you may be into and stuff. You don't know that it's wrong until you come into the light and your darkness is exposed. Meaning God tells us as Christians, as believers, as his followers, what he likes and what he doesn't like, what is pleasing and acceptable to him and what is not. And as a believer, like I said, we have some Christians that really don't care what God thinks. They just want to proclaim his name on social media. They want to be a Christian to for their business to be um to blossom and to sell items to people but they don't follow the word you know and some people don't even study and okay um so this is why god want to expose these things to us because he really want us to know what he expects from us as his children as his followers he want us to follow him right y'all and so some people might think you be tripping i'm tripping we religious i'm religious i'm doing too much I heard that all my life, but honey, when I tell you, I want to hear God say, well done. I mean that. Okay. And to your nose, but if you look at altars that Wiccans have or the cultists or Satanists, they'll usually have a fragment of a branch on the altar in some form oh, or a wreath or something they've weaved together from a tree to actually symbolize the same thing, the mm -hmm. same God, the same abundance from the earth, if you will. Mm. And so... It's just sad to me because it's almost 500 years before Jesus comes on the scene. Mm. Wow. This stuff been taking place five, almost, excuse me, almost 500 years before Jesus stepped foot on the scene, on the earth. Now he was in the heavenly realm, but before he's come to this earth, they've been doing these rituals, these sacrifices, this perversion has been here so just imagine you know god allowing certain things to happen for so long and being gracious and being merciful and then he said okay i have to come to redeem the people i have to come and save them because they are like, like destruction is all around y'all you know um perversion all kinds of things so. and that's why i like to just really um differentiate actually between judaism and being hebrew mm -hmm. because i believe jesus he didn't go to their schools. He was schooled by his mother and by the Holy Spirit to know what he knows. And he, if you will, didn't practice Judaism. He was a Hebrew born, born into that culture, but he was one of the true people of God mm. who stayed pure. The Israelites and the Hebrews are different than Jews mm -hmm. in my book. Mm. Anyway, just a side note and to that. Her, but yes. in Ezekiel, and that's her opinion. Amen. She said the Hebrews and the Jews are um, similar or alike or whatever she said. But that's her opinion. And so we don't know if that's a fact. It's basically what I want to point out. This is a commentary on this verse. And it actually says the branch mentioned is probably an Asherah, a tree or a wooden pole that stood for the fertility goddess. It was essentially a phallic symbol. God says that their wickedness was the same as sticking that idol right in his nose, right in his face. And we, we need to be mindful. If and she was reading from that bottom part there where, you know, God is basically telling us how he feel about it. It's like we sticking a branch up his nose when he see us worshiping that goddess Asherah. Because that's where that whole Christmas tree, that whole thing come from. It ain't even come from Santa Claus. Remember being told that Santa Claus was the whole idol? behind Christmas, that ain't even, that's one of them. But the real deep root of the issue come from the perversion, the worship of Baal, the reason why they made it. If you didn't get a chance to see the the um, the whole point of the Christmas tree and how they came, this whole thing came about, it wasn't about Santa Claus. It was about the goddess uh, Shara and all those idols. And, 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 and so it's, it's really wild. They was carving trees and because they miss people and they miss the winter. They was bringing trees in their house. They missed the summer because they was bring they was bringing trees in their house and because they didn't know the seasons and the times back then. You got to go to that video and check it out for yourself. But let's keep going. We see how God feels about it. We getting ready to get into some deeper things. So stay tuned.
falling into this category yeah. of doing abominations and also in a sense we're turning to god so we're showing up to church and we're doing what we think is good but we're mm -hmm. practicing certain things in our personal lives yeah. um, and even things that we don't consider sin if it's connected to the occult yeah it's, it's sin. sin it's an abomination yeah. right and so uh, if there's something you're praying about and it seems that god isn't responding mm -hmm. maybe an analysis needs to be done mm -hmm. are you living a double life yeah, yeah. And how many, point, yeah. I, I was just saying most Christian would remove a Buddha statue from their home or something, but yet still have the Christmas tree or the superhero figurine that repre literally represents Thor or Hades or Mercury or Zeus or whatever. I think this is why we're losing the young people, is the hypocrisy they're actually seeing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't match up. They got the people who look perfect and are towing the line. Imagine being a young Christian and just like some of us growing up in church and your family always have a Christmas tree like that to them, to you growing up and to them, the Christmas tree was okay because it was symbolization of us um, celebrating Jesus, us setting aside that day to remember him and, and give our thanks and show our gratitude also to be a blessing to other people, giving out gifts and, you know, sharing, you know, whatever um love we could give on that day in whatever way that we've been taught to give it whether it's through feeding people hosting you know the event at your home and, and everybody bringing gifts and doing um I, I remember too at the church we used to do a thing called um what is the thing called you people do it at their jobs too where you pick names out of a certain um a hat or a box or whatever and then everybody has to buy a gift for the person that they pick I forget the name of it, but if you remember the name, put it in the comments what that's called. But um, those were some of the traditions around these times that, you know, we have all participated. Well, I participated in. I can't say all because some people may have may never done that. But I've done that. I've done a lot of those traditions. And imagine just growing up into that, not knowing that it's wrong, not knowing that it's symbolizing something more deeper, way more perverted way more evil and wicked than you can even imagine and it hurts god to see us doing it in ignorance and even some people that will see this video and still celebrate it because you know in their mind it's like hey it's not harming it's not we're not doing anything wrong we're not celebrating it like them this is our celebration but it's still the root of it is this they created it and so um this is just something that been in my spirit and my heart to share. Like I said, if you watched the first video, you already know why I brought this up. But I want to get into some deeper things. We want to head on over to some other stuff um, because this video is going to get a little wild. So we did our disclaimer so that way you won't have the kids, the grandkids, little nieces, nephews, brothers and sisters, whoever in front of this TV watching this or on your phone listening to it out loud. So. But then they're seeing that they don't and they're wondering where is the real line to toe? Where does it lie between being completely extreme on one end or extreme on the other, but yet not just like walking the middle ground and being gray in all areas. Like you have to know the truth. You yeah. have to. Mm -hmm. And how are we supposed to support each other as um, brothers and sisters of Christ if we're not aware of these things? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Like we would just fall into if you will, just kind of like a, a latrine hole, it just kind of like, it's oh, confusion. we're going to be war. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the Druids, again, proof that it kind of morphed into different types of trees. They're actually, as it states here, Druids, the learned class among the ancient Celts, whose name means knowing or finding the oak tree. Mm. So it does turn oh. into other trees. Y'all, she's basically saying that, okay, it started with that Asherah, goddess and carving out the trees and all that stuff go watch part one as i keep saying but this part here is about to get into some more deeper perversions and deeper things it turned it see one thing about the devil he's not going to just come one way if you let him in the area he's going to try to secure that whole ground he's going to try to secure every corner of that room to make sure he can take the whole room down, make the whole room dark, okay? Where he don't want no light in it whatsoever. So I say all this to say, she's getting ready to explain how um, Julius Caesar is the best known source of information about the Druids. Um, and it says here, um, they come, I believe she's going to read this, so I'm not going to read it. I'm going to let her do her thing. But 
I just wanted to react to it and bring this to your attention because like I said when I watched it I was blown away um this uh druids um it turns into different trees different versions of perversion different versions of idol worship and can you imagine us having christianity or just not even christianity but just being a follower of jesus being saved by the blood baptized under the holy spirit right and then the enemy just creating all these different things or even before jesus came he already tried to set his um foundation here and planting confusion and implanting seeds in people head of different ideas of maybe you could be a muslim maybe you should be a, um an israelite or maybe you should be a buddhist maybe you should be a um a a, a, a deem a devil worshiper a atheist or a satanic priest or go to a satanic church like he already been putting seeds in people head and this is where that saying come from, do as thou wilt. That means do what you want to do. And the Bible says the same thing because you do have free will. But the Bible tells us that we have a choice between death and life. God says every day I set before you a choice. Choose life. But the devil ain't going to tell you that, you know. So just look how he starts his his mess. Different sacrifices um, of those things. Of, of basically humans underneath that tree. So just a little. That's what the word that. druid means is yeah. finding the oak tree. Find, knowing or finding the oak tree. So this is a newt. Since we mentioned the gods that are associated with kind of being bisexual, transgender, and so on, I wanted to give examples. Sumerian or Canaanite on the right. Um, I don't know why in both the Egyptian and the Canaanite cultures, they depicted as a naked female sprawling throughout the sky as though the, the, you know, the sun, moon, and stars were in her belly and other areas and Mother life, Earth. right. And life all came from her kind of thing, but they did. So I just want to explain to y'all what she's talking about here because if you just like not really paying attention, you can't see. So basically, this is a woman on your right hand side where I'm, well, left, yeah, left hand side. It's, it's, yeah, anyway, on the left hand side right here, the blue picture, the Egyptians, they have a woman basically naked ho hovering over this, whatever this is in between with a whole bunch of people, idols, symbolizations, all kinds of stuff. And basically, she has the stars in her belly. If you can see, these are stars, even over top of her. But then she also have them in her belly. And this, you can just tell, this is all of this stuff falls under the same dimension, under the same demonic realm, um, or the same principalities. You would just see them re, um, like a uh, re revamp or re um. What is it, Lord? Re what is it, Lord? What, what, what's the word I'm trying to say? Like rebuild themselves in a different um, shape, like kind of like shape shifting, if that makes sense. Like they um, masquerade. That's the word I'm going I'm to use. That's the word that fits this situation best. They will masquerade as something else, like, you know, and but it's the same thing like people that worship the stars women that say they are northern stars and all this it's all bow worship it is all against jesus christ and so they have the woman on the um, left side which is the egyptian doing the same thing then when you get over here on the right side that is it's the sumerian and the canaanites they have the woman doing the same thing she's hovering over the um which looks like a man or a woman. I cannot tell, but it's probably a man because I don't see boobs. Um, whatever the case may be. But he looks like he has his hand on her private area and her breast. And these bow uh, things here on the left and right side of him. Because um, you can see the horns, which is the symbolization as bow. And, you know, back in the day, you know how when they always show the devil, they always show him with the horns. So all of these things, like I said, it, it fits all his character is just, it's him. It's him masquerading as different things, but it's all him. And so you see the two bow things holding up the arms and holding up, then this thing is holding up her uh, uh, private areas. And it's just perversion. The bow thing is over here in the right hand corner in this picture underneath you got it looks like a man laying on the floor. I don't know what in the world he's doing, but all of it represents perversion, 
um, child sacrificing. You see they got the stuff in the woman's belly. All these symbolizations mean something demonic, actually. Nothing good is something demonic. And, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> L-M-G. See? Don't worry. We're going to get back to it. Child, when I tell you, I'm just so over the devil. Okay. Depicted as a cow sometimes. Hmm whose great body formed the sky and heavens, a sycamore tree or a giant sow suckling many piglets. And that kind of, you know, if, if you suckle many piglets, that's where she gets kind of the idea of many breasts mm -hmm. um, and Polly having many breasts and being blue. That Did y'all hear what she just said? Cause you know that it's a lot of people out here um, that believes in having Polly relationships. Like they want to have a man have six wives or I believe that's how it go. Yeah, like a man having six wives or three wives, all this stuff. But that's the same thing that is in Islam. Same difference, but it's still bow worship, y'all. It's still bow worship. And so um, this is why, like I said, it's so good to read. It's so good to like look at things that will give you information, give you wisdom. And you can always go to the scripture to see, is this stuff in the Bible? You know, do your own research. You know, don't just take my word for it. Don't just take her word for it. You know, this information is available to all of us. Um, let's go a little bit further. Um, I don't want to make the video too long. But then again, I don't want to cut it short because I'm going to have to make a thousand of these videos. Um, however, however the sky. right. Um, a pot on her head seemed to be many cultures spoke on that, but it was her uterus as though it's viewing females as though that's really the only function they have More is to amazing. birth children. Um, you know, which is not at all God's plan exactly. for that. You're not just a tool or a something to be used. And see, even back then, you know, um, when this whole, the devil created this situation with bow worship, he always uh, demeanor, the, put the women down, deme make uh, demeanor them and all kinds of things like that. So he never wanted a man to honor a woman and a woman to honor a man. Everything in Bible worship is to demeanor each other, to make each other feel like the scum of the earth. Only using people for the things that you feel like you need them for, like a man using and running over women just to birth our children and saying oh that's all you're good for is popping out babies not really loving her not really wanting to spend the rest of his life with this woman and vice versa some uh, women get with men only because they are gonna suck up all their finances and you know be able to just lean on them for everything but they really don't care about the man you know and so this is why it's just not good to be selfish um selfishly in situationships okay it's good to just sit aside and heal do the work that you need to do in yourself so when you seeking out a partner you're seeking out somebody for love and not for any other reason because anything other than that you're under lust which is under bow worship it is not it's not authentic and it's not real that's where they got this idea um, abortion, of course we know that with Baal, Chemosh, Moloch, Marduk, as we saw all those chambers for burning babies and, and humans, um, was part of worship. I mean, it just makes so much sense. I just want to say this, right? So you see how now, like, um, and this, I've been saying this, show. I don't think that we should even have the opportunity to be able to have rights to kill a baby or not kill a baby god you know god forgive me but i'm just gonna say it i don't even think that should have been a thing that we should have to choose from so now that you see people are trying to fight for women rights and oh we should have a right to choose it's our body no we actually should have never had this as a thing in the first place because and i'm not saying this to judge nobody because i made this video about six times but i'm gonna say this again um, because y'all never heard it, but I had two abortions when I was younger. My first one was at 19, and I believe the second one I had was at 20, um, 21. And both times, I wasn't ready for the baby, whatever the case may be. But if that had never been an option, 
I would have had the baby. I would have had no choice but to have the baby, you know. So just because that's an option and it's out there, I believe a lot of our youth utilize it. A lot of parents utilize it because they know it's out there and it's a it's an option. So they're gonna you're gonna go ahead and say, Oh, well, I don't want the responsibility of um taking care of this child or I can't handle it right now or whatever the case may be. So I'm gonna get rid of it. And nine times out of ten is not the people that are getting R A P E E D um by people and that are getting pregnant and having children. It happens, but the percentage um versus the percentage of people who just do it because it's too much and or oh, they're not ready for a baby right now. It's the wrong time and wrong season. I'm not financially stable versus that group of people. The scale is way higher. So when we try to say, oh, we should be doing it because uh, people get R-A-P-E-D and why should you force them to have a child? That's demonic just to even try to put that in to make people feel bad for knowing that this is wrong. You know, this is wrong. And I wish I had known how wrong this was way back then because back then i'm telling you when you in the darkness you really do not comprehend the light the scripture is so true when it says the darkness cannot comprehend the light it is facts you ever try to explain jesus to somebody that's in the darkness they don't know you sound like you speaking spanish okay um unless the lord is calling them out that darkness honey they don't hear the word. they don't know what you're talking about so, yeah, let's finish Our this, culture yeah. today, how we have this, um, you know, anti-abortion bills and you're not allowed to do that. And what church steps up and starts offering this, uh, in fact, we'll pay for it. Mm. Church of Satan. Church of Satan. Satan. And it's like, we're still, like, literally sending babies to Marduk. Yeah. You see that? The church of Satan offered to pay for... Because the abortion, they was going to pass a law to shut the whole situation down. And the church of Satan, out of all the churches in the whole entire world, this church was like so big on keeping this business running. So they went and they paid for it to stay active. Their own money. And believe me, they got a lot of it. The church of Satan, you know they got a lot of money, okay? Because they experiencing their heaven right now. They not going to go to heaven 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 they're experiencing their heaven right now okay and so this is crazy that they're the only people that wanted to keep this this place running and keep this place going it tells you a lot about the people like i said that are voting for those things that are so like oh you can't tell me what to do with my body you gotta really be discerning to see the spirit behind a person that is so big on pushing that agenda because honey why why is this so important you must be getting them things left and right or you plan on getting more like you know you you have to be more responsible like you got to sit down somewhere if that's something that you just keep doing that is not right well they go through a lot of um <laughs> lengths actually unfortunately to actually breed more children usually and through um the orgies through orgies through a lot of the satanic ritual abuse that happens, there's always lots of babies born from that that are conceived. Wow. And that's on purpose, not only through um, invoking demons and actually reaching a different transcendence or illuminated state, but also to create more babies, more flesh to be sacrificed as blood. I watched. Oh, sad to say, you guys, that, you know, actually to have a big old orgy to plan, like I said, the men that are in bow worship, they look at things differently. That's why sometimes when you with somebody that are operating under these spirits, they don't see you how God see you. You know, they see you as a piece of meat. They only see you for your flesh. You know, what they can do to you in the bedroom. And, you know, they only call you when they need you for that. They don't see your heart. They don't see God's plan for your life. You know, they won't walk in a company on, they won't walk in a company you on your journey and vice versa. Um, because they are after the flesh. And this is what people that do that bow worship, child sacrificing, sex orgies, all of this stuff, just to impregnate the women. And the women know about it, clearly. If you in it, you know, okay? They know about these things or whatever. Or just operating in lust. You don't even understand how you're also in this bow worship. Like this whole bow perverted spirit is over you, on you, in you. And you're operating in it, you know. 
Um, and the enemy wants it to just be okay. Like, oh, we young, we're going to go through this phase. Like, no, how about we start teaching our younger generation, you know, so they don't have to go down the road of shame that we, I know I went down the road of shame at a point in my life. Um, excuse me. I know I went through, you know, a lot of hurt and pain and confusion and suicidal thoughts, depression, all kinds of stuff after having abortions, you know, being afraid about, um, a lot of different things that I just didn't understand. You know, I had nightmares and all kinds of crazy stuff. Like, this is why it's good to really protect our children, their ear and eye gates, to teach them stuff that they really need to know. Like, teach them the important things. Once they hit a certain age, I ain't talking about our little babies, but once they hit a certain age, we got to really start telling them, like, why it's not good to sleep around and to be all outside wild and getting people pregnant and abortions like we we really need to dig in with the truth um but in pedophilia you're actually it's part of Baal worship marduk molek kemosh um the rothschilds and world's elite that control banking are involved in that we should all probably know this by now that the government does take part in all of this <gasps> And, you know, it's so crazy because you have, we have to understand, you know, I know that we're new to this here in this ministry. Like we're just getting our feet wet, digging in and exposing a lot of this stuff. But I've been, you know, on this journey watching this and, and getting information because I feel like, you know, a lot of this stuff has played out in childhood. A lot of these things have played out in families, you know, where people have got molested. You know, you have pedophiles. You have, you know, spirits that get transferred from one person to the next person. Somebody touch you, then this person is touching other people, and it just get passed on, passed down. And the crazy part about it is... um, People will say, oh, lock them up or kill them. No, get these people delivered. Get these people set free. Cast these demons out of them so they can be free from this. So they won't keep touching and molesting and perverting other children and taking away their innocence. And so this is why I like studies like this because it helped people and all of us not to be ignorant to Satan's devices. You know, when you sit up and um, look at things through the wrong eyesight lens, you're not looking at it through um, God's eyes. You're looking at it through, uh, through the eyes of the just the demonic, okay? A demonic solution to a problem that is going to continue if you don't deal with the root of it. And so this is why it's good to be educated and to know where things come from, where stuff stem from, um, and how to deal with it. And so it's crazy that our higher-ups judges people that are in government people that run big firms banks all these things this is why they say it's so crazy because even um oprah for instance i'm just saying i'm just it is what it is they already said like she's a part of some sex trafficking or with the children and all kinds of stuff that these people that got all this money all this publicity, all this fame, and people are worshiping them, idolizing them. Oh, I want to be like this person. I want to be like Oprah. Just because she got money and just because she got fame, you don't know what this person's heart is like. You don't know what type of stuff she done did to get where she's at and how many people she hurt. This is sad. This is really sad. And yeah. yoga, a lot Our of... video just got taken down. I know. <laughs> it stopped. <laughs> um, in yoga, a lot of the positions that you're practicing are for sexual um, stuff, and it does usually involve pedophilia. Ain't that deep? We talked about Oprah with that uh, New Age Christianity. All the Christians that say yoga is fine, you're being religious, you're doing too much, you're being too deep. They don't like to read, they don't like to study, and they will get mad at people like me that tells the truth because they feel like they can't do nothing. Oh, we can't do nothing. We can't even stretch our bodies. No, we can stretch our bodies, but you have to be careful of what you are participating in and what do the stuff mean that you signing up for. Because if you're sitting up here bending your body a certain way and twisting and turning and it means like something 
in the spirit and you don't know what this stuff means, you sitting up here opening up your life to demonic possession, demonic spirits, you know, for spirits to come in and tear down your marriage, spirits to come in and mess with your children, spirits to come in and mess with your finances or mess with your health, you know, so you, we have to be careful as Christians. So don't get mad at people that expose the dark, just come into the light or stay in, stay in the dark, but don't get mad at us. Because we're doing it actually to help others, people that actually want to know. And people that want to know the truth and that won't get mad, that but they will try to adjust if they have to. You know, you never know. Sometimes I did a lot of stuff in ignorance. I had nobody teaching me certain things because they didn't even know about it to teach me anything. So I learned a lot of stuff through trial and error. So now I like to seek out information so I could prevent a lot of different things because when you get older you don't got time to be <laughs> making big giant mistakes and all this kind of mess you you want to prevent as much of that as you can uh we'll be seeing that later where this i have proof for that in the next couple of slides mm -hmm. however child sex trafficking is linked with this otherwise if you don't have a market for this right you don't have a perpetual mm, demand or what is it, surplus of it for blood sacrifice and children to be offered up constantly. It says that lots of blood is needed to open the supposed portal of CERN or AKA Arch of Baal, mm -hmm. erected all over the world for Moloch and Marduk to take form and bring him into this dimension to take rulership. This is, if you will, they're waiting for their God to show up. You know what's so crazy? When they say um, CERN, I learned that um, CERN, I watched a whole video about that as well. Like CERN has a lot to do with the government. And so like when I heard her say that name, I said, oh, wow. Like even with COVID, and I don't know if we could even say COVID on YouTube, but ton, okay, you know. And so, yeah, it has a lot to do with that. I saw that name like several times when COVID was mentioned. It said that name, CERN, CERN, CERN. I'm like, what is going on? Even the pandemic, it means fear. Like, it's a whole lot, honey. <laughs> a whole lot. But we're going to be bringing a lot more of this to this channel. So I'm going to let her finish out this. And we're going to close the video out because it's already at 37 minutes. And we're going to do part five. I'll be posting that soon. So stay tuned. CERN is very CERN is very interesting. I mean, I think we should do a whole piece uh -huh. getting to the bottom of CERN. That would be fascinating. But but um, I haven't I haven't heard them um, like offering babies for it yet. I have a picture of the Ark of Baal. In today's world, we hear of it always spoken of as Palmyra. They cover up like a. So I'm going in this video here. Like I said, the next portion of this video we're going to get into the palm mirror the arc the arc of vow and we notice how um just to explain you know a little teeny bit before i end it how um you see how it's shaped like an arch and so basically when people get married you see a lot of people go underneath arches that look just like this and it's so funny like i said this is why you gotta know your enemy you gotta know exactly what's going on and how the devil set try to set people up for failure basically um with certain symbolizations certain things that mean stuff certain stuff or stand for certain stuff like already trying to curse something that god has blessed or a union that god wants to stand together the enemy be already trying to plant little stuff and seeds and stuff like that and it's just it's sickening and so um I thank God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I thank God, you know, that I'm able to impart that in you all. And, and, and we can go through this together and learn together, grow together. Because wisdom and knowledge is power for sure. And it brings light in the darkness. Whatever we didn't know, God will start to illuminate it. He will, And the Holy Spirit, I love this about God. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us into all truth. That means we don't have to sit in darkness. We don't have to sit and be ignorant about stuff. There's so much information out here. We can seek to find what is true, what God likes, what he don't like, why he don't like it. Um, what God loves and why he love it, you know, um, this world is for us to have rule and authority 
over it you know we shouldn't be walking around feeling like oh we can't do this we can't do that we feeling stiff and stuck and no knowledge is power so we know what we getting ourselves into we're not doing things ignorantly and serving idols and worshiping idols making god feel bad or making him feel like you know we're not studying to show ourselves approved. That's what the Bible tells us, 2 Timothy 2.15. We got to study to show ourselves approved. And studying, this is also a form of studying, you know, because um, we're learning a lot through these this video. Um, so we'll be back with part five. I'm going to end it here at 40 minutes. I love you. Share the video with somebody. Take some time to watch part one through whatever just like on the weekend if you clean it or on the weekend if you just don't know what to watch and you don't want to watch worldly stuff take some time or when you at work put it in your ears and just listen look at your phone peep at this peep at the symbolizations and check things out put in the comments if you made it to the end of this video and put second timothy 2 15 and say i will study to show myself approved I love you. I'll be back with part five in just a few days or so. Bye.